So Habe Webb, Yasser Qadi, Ingrid Matson, Mohammed Majid, Sherman Jackson, Tamara Gray, Zaid Shakir, Omar Sayman, Jihad Turk. <laughs> the thing about when you just appeal to people's feelings and their hawa, basically that's what compassion imams do. Like they're just feeding people's egos and telling them that what you're doing is okay, the way that you're living your life just with the status quo, like an American or Western status quo, that's okay. You know, adopt or if they're not living in the West, they're living in Africa or they're living in Asia. They're saying, yeah, adopt this Western lifestyle that's pushed by the elites because of Western influence. And th there's no contradiction between that and Islam. You know, this whole issue of gender mixing is becoming a big topic this past week because people are realizing that some of these supposedly traditional scholars are promoting all kinds of gender mixing. So this is gender mixing is a big part of Western culture. Um, they see Western Westerners see uh, separation of women from men as something very backwards. They're they're highly offended by this, and they view it as the kind of uh, slavery of women, or you're subjugating women by not allowing them to mix with men. Uh, so this has become uh, this has always been an issue, like a criticism from the West against Islam. But for most of Islamic history in the colonial period, the Muslims stood strong and said, well, no, this is our this is our religion. <laughs> we are not going to mix genders. We're not going to create a situation where zina is going to run rampant as it is in the West. So, no, we're not going to compromise on this. Now we have supposed scholars and Islamic institutions that are pushing for gender mixing, and they're doing it in subtle ways and sometimes not so subtle ways so an example of a not so subtle way that they do this is in the in the masajid so in the u.s we have something called the fiqh council of north america it is headed by yasser qadi and the fiqh council of north america put out a statement or a fatwa rather that all masajid must allow women to pray in the main prayer area of the masjid with the men with no barrier um, this is their fatwa. I've posted to it on my Telegram channel many times. Uh, there's been an article uh, about it, deconstructing this fatwa on muslimskeptic.com. They th they're saying, th this is like gender mixing in the masjid, because you're saying that if there's, a w if there's any barrier between the men and women, this is actually uh, violating the fatwa. This is like haram, basically. Um, and they published this fatwa it was signed on to by all of the celebrity shuyukh famous celebrity youtube shuyukh and uh that's you know an explicit call for gender mixing in the masjid and if you go to the masajid of uh, these figures they actually have implemented that like it's not enough to have like because some masajid are two stories and there might be a second story where the women pray and they can see the imam like from above but it's hard or it's impossible to see the women the men and women are still separate uh but even that is a violation of this fatwa because the fatwa says no those women don't have to pray in the balcony if they choose if they want they should have be able to come to the main musalla and pray in the main musalla with men with no barrier so this is one of the examples of an ex explicit push for uh, mm -hmm. gender mixing. But there's like more subtle ways that they do it too, more subversive ways. They also, in their advertising, they're constantly showing pictures of their gatherings, like their lessons. Uh, uh, and it shows that the men and women are sitting facing each other. They're sitting facing each other and talking and, you know, joking. And uh, the sheikh is right there with teaching a dars, <laughs> teaching uh, some book of fiqh. And then, uh, you know, the, the male students and the uh, female students are so close, <clears throat> so close to each other that if they reach out, they could touch each other. So this is what they say. The message of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the message during the time of the four rightly gated, guided Caliphs did not have a barrier separating men and women. Men prayed in the front, children in the middle, women behind the children. 
All the schools of Islamic law, Sunni and Shia, agree on this point. So why should we adopt any other ideal? When women are in the main musallah, they are naturally more attentive, more engaged, and thus better able to fulfill their function as awliya, supporters and better contributors engaged. to establishing the Muslim community. Some Muslims Islam. argue that the barrier is necessary to guard against fitna. However, the Prophet وسلم, never stated that a woman's presence in the mosque in and of itself is a source of fitna. The instruction to men to avoid fitna is to lower their gaze, not to put a physical barrier that blocks women from the main musalla. The benefit and the rule of having women engaged in the masjid outweighed some hypothetical possibility of fitna. SubhanAllah. We call upon masjids to ensure that women have access to the main musalla to perform salah, listen to the Jummah khutbah, or attend and participate in lectures or discussions. This should be in addition to any separate area that currently exists for women. So the masjid might have a separate area for women, but there needs to be additional accommodation for those women to come to the main musalla. Recognizing that the architecture of some masjids may make it difficult to find a barrier-free space for women in the main musalla, especially for Jummah, masjids still have a duty, the duty, to find a solution to realize the sunnah of including women in the main musalla. They went yeah, from calling yeah. it like, oh, there's nothing from the Prophet وسلم, to say that women in the masjid in and of itself is a fitna, to saying that, oh, it's a sunnah. <laughs> Of including women in the in the main in the main musalla, they have to say they have to say have the the sunnah is to include them in the main musalla and have them participate in discussions and lectures and attend the khutbah. Like what sunnah is this? Like wh where is the sunnah of women attending the Jummah khutbah or being part participating in lectures? The sunnah when we read about the Ummahat al Mu'minin, they had a barrier. Like when they were talking as teachers. I mean, look at the look at the signatories, the people who signed this, uh, endorsed by the following: Isna's Task Force for Women Friendly Masjid. So you have a bunch of these people, feminine, yes. like Hind Mekki is like a major feminist, Aisha Adawiya, major feminist, uh, Sarah Saeed, major feminist. Then you have Mozammil Siddiqui, he's a reformist, pure reformist, Munir Farid as well. I mean, these are known Hassan Qaswini, she, she, but yeah, here below you can see. So, Hey, Web, Yasser Qadi, Ingrid Matson, Muhammad Majid, Sherman Jackson, Tamara Gray, Zaid Shakir, Omar Sayman, Jihad Turk, <laughs> Jihad Turk, like is... the guy from Bayan that you guys might know. This uh, turban hijab wearing feminist that runs Bayan Institute. So, yeah, I mean, the effect of this, it has a very tangible effect on the Muslim community because when we were coming up, we were growing up and we were participating in the masjid activities and being active. The religious Muslims who are in the masjid, they were maintaining haya and uh, they were avoiding any kind of mixing, ikhtilat. And there were liberal Muslims. So liberal Muslims were engaged in mixing. And so may Allah forgive them and, and guide them. May Allah forgive and guide us. Uh, but there was a distinction. Like the, those liberal Muslims knew that we're not going to bring that kind of mixing to the masjid. We're not going to bring that kind of mixing and force it onto the masjid. So there was this, this divide between the yeah. practicing Muslims and the non-practicing Muslims. Now, what's happened in the U.S. is that the practicing Muslims, the ones that are involved in the masjid, are engaged in mixing. If you go to their houses, for example, they invite you for iftar or they invite you for Eid celebration. They won't right. have any separation. It's just men and women, the husband and wives all together sitting in a circle, laughing and eating and joking. And they're the religion. They're not the liberal Muslims, you know, technically. Uh -huh. They've become the liberal Muslims. Muslim men in the last centuries would have never done that. I mean, the, where I'm from, like, men are very protective of their sisters. And there's no there's no jokes about that, you know. But yeah. you have uh, Muslims that give khutbah in the masjid, but their daughters in somewhere in university, um, and subhanallah is crazy but yeah. alhamdulillah maybe their daughters Allah's, don't Allah's even wear hijab we don't know <laughs> we don't know what they're how they're raising their children but mm -hmm. this is this is what they're presenting as the model for the muslim community to adopt